fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. Today I'd like to share with you the fish processing day at the Nimbus Fish Hatchery in the Sacramento area. My mom and I visited here and first we walked on the river and looked at the salmon spawning like behind us. And then we're gonna go up the, look on the ladder where they're making their way up the ladder. They're gonna end up in the fish hatchery and the raceways up there. And when they're mature enough to spawn, the hatchery takes them in and they process the fish by taking the eggs and the milk and making the, the smolts and fries. Typically Nimbus has been releasing about four million smolts of the fall run Chinook salmon, but since 2020, because of the droughts, they've been forced to truck these juvenile salmon to the San Francisco and San Pablo Bays, which is not ideal. They should be, they should be released here at the hatchery or at least in the American River so they can naturally make their way back up to the river. And that's maybe one of the reasons why the returns have been so low in recent years. This year in 2023, Nimbus is now experimenting with a new tagging system called Parentage Based Tagging or PBT. Now in PBT, they, the hatchery collects the genetic material from a clipping of the tail fin or caudal fin and they trace it back to the parents. So this year in 2023, they took 500 salmon parents and from there they were produce 1.1 million fry. Now, when the, what this fry returns in two to four years, that fry can be traced back to the exact set of parents that produced it. And this way, they're gonna be able to estimate how many of these fry that are released at the hatchery or inside the American River are actually able, able to make the journey back from the ocean all the way back up to the hatchery itself in the American River. When these PBT fry are released, they take up to a year to undergo the process called smoltification. That's when they transition from being a freshwater to a saltwater fish and their whole body undergoes changes. These PBT fry, when they're released here in the river, in the American River, they're only about one and a half to two inches long and they have just absorbed the yolk sac. So they have no um, feedings from the hatchery, which means there's been not a lot of interference with humans into making these fry. Before, when the smolts were released, they're about six months old and they're about three and a half to four inches long. They've been being fed by the hatchery that whole time and they're carrying uh, coated wire tags to tra track their genetics and their origin. And they also have um, their adipose fin clips, so you can clearly tell they're uh, hatchery salmon. Now these PBT salmon, when they return, they'll look like a wild salmon. They have no coated wire tags and they have no adipose fin clippings. So less interference with the salmon, the better they're hoping. This year, the hatchery released 1.1 million smolts into the American River. And this is the first time in decades they've been able to re release such small salmon at that size. They're released at night, hoping to avoid predation by birds and hopefully that will increase the returns as well. Okay, with these PBT fish, the hatchery has released a total of 5.5 million combination of smolts and fries. We won't know for two to four years when the adults, when the salmon return back to the adults, if this PBT system worked or is it better when they truck them down to work. But we're gonna find out in two to four years and hopefully I'll let you know. So we're gonna go check out the fish processing and I'm gonna show you some images we took earlier today along the river. The fish are spawning all along the river. It's amazing. If you wanna come out and see the natural life cycle and what I feel is the best thing about the Sacramento area, come check out. It's, we've got the hatchery here and we also have a beautiful one in McCollumy. Come along with me and my mom. <laughs> It's a little offshoot and man, it is chock full of spawning salmon everywhere. Salmon aren't really out in the middle, they're on the side here. Right along here. Why are they hugging the side? I'm going to show you in a minute. The reason why they come out here are these settling ponds. You see this wastewater treatment water? This is coming from the hatchery and it's got the scent of the hatchery. And this water here is gonna flow out into the river. So the wastewater comes out here, and all the salmon are gathering around thinking it's the hatchery.
because the water from that wastewater is leaking out underneath here. They think this is the hatchery. Hang out like this. You can see the fish coming up there. Come on, you have a big one. Look, you can see if that's not what. That's not the hatchery. Do turn. Oh. Wow. Oh, that was a good one. Wow. <laughs> oh, did you that one was little? He hits a button here, put some electricity in the water. Oh, they calm down now. That's your five. So they intake them in. They kill them. They sort whether they're male or female. So the way they check it is they're going to bend them and see if eggs or milk come out. So he's going to bend it. That's a boy. Milk came out. Milk. Boy. Boys go down here. Boys go down Boy. That's a big, big males. So they get hit with the bolt gun, and then they cut the gills. These ones are too small. What do they do? They go back into this hole here. No, and they go, go back and go back into the no. They roll around here and they're going to put in this hole. Then they go into the holding pen and then try to mature them up. They kill them through bonking them. See, they bonk them. Oh, steelhead. Steelhead's coming. Steelhead. Another steelhead. They clip the tail.
After the fish processing, we're going to do a dissection. So these are our Chinook salmon. The, anybody want to guess which one they think is the male? What do you think? Male That's right, this one here is the male. What can we look at to tell which one's the male? There are some things that you guys think might identify. He's a little bit bigger, yeah. What else? Hook jaw. So if we look at his face, <clears throat> if we look at his face, he's got a hook jaw compared to the female. So compared to the female, the female though, she doesn't have that hooked jaw. They have teeth on their tongue. I can't really see. And that's something that they actually gain whenever they're coming back up. They only this only occurs when they hit the fresh water. It's in fresh water, yes. Why do they do that? They have to get teeth on their tongue. Um they don't chew their food. It helps so, so the fish can't escape when they yeah. come by. They yeah. Eat on the tongue. Yeah, so. Grip I thought they don't eat when they're coming up then. No. Pass them around. Most part they don't. Yeah. yeah. But whenever they are eating, they it grips their tongue. This area right here that's blown up, this is a fish, a swim bladder. So fish have that and that allows them to fill with air or, the, or let their air out so they can go up and down in the water. Uh, has anybody here ever had dissolvable sutures? Well, they did not have to have removed. This is what it was made out of right here. This is the intestine of the salmon. So this right here is that intestine of the salmon. This is um, normally bigger, but whenever they leave the ocean, as I said, they stop eating. And so this gets re-dissolved back into their body along with a lot of their other digestive organs. This is the liver. So that's the liver. This is called the caudal fin. It's kind of like the hips, your hips. Right? So if you move your hips, that's kind of what this is. Can you tell the, the sex Japanese by the fins? Really Not by the fins. Not by the fins? Not by the fins? No. It's the coloring, it's what comes out whenever you squeeze them, and the, the jaw. But in the ocean, you can't tell by the... They're identical. Yeah. You can't tell the difference between male or female. This fin here is called the adipose fin. So you may hear in fishing regulations, or you may hear us talk about the adipose fin being removed. If this fin is missing, it means that that fish came from a hatchery for sure, and that it's tagged if it's a salmon. For steelhead trout, if this fin is missing, it's definitely a fishery. Um, or hatchery why fish, did, why they use that for regulations because for regulations you can't keep wild caught steelhead trout. So they clip this fin on all of the hatchery fish. So you, if it's not there, then you can keep it. And you'll see that the male has a little bit of pink on his tail area here, whereas the female she blends in a little bit more. The males die first whenever they after they spawn. So females will actually stick around for a little bit just to kind of like keep track of things and then they end up dying also after a couple of weeks. Hey Julia, you just gave us an excellent tour and a dissection of the salmon and I wanted to ask you some questions. Um, what, did, what are we doing here today? So today we're processing the Chinook salmon that have come up um, from the ocean to spawn. So the processing is happening in our hatchery now. Uh, the salmon come up in October and we process November through mid-December. And how many do you expect to process? Not sure on the numbers on that. It's different every year. Yeah. And once you, once you get the eggs in the mill and you've got the fry, what do you do with them? It depends. Most of them are raised here in the hatchery. We raise four and a half million salmon every year. Um, sometimes they will do special DNA testing on some of the eggs and release them at an earlier time um, and they will test to see the uh, mortality rate from the fish that are released early versus the fish that are kept a little longer. And what do you do with the fish once you've processed them? The fish are sent to a processing plant in Washington and in Washington they determine if they're food grade or not. If they are food grade then they are filleted and sent back to the food banks throughout the Sacramento Valley. If they're not then they're ground up into cat food, dog food, fish food, fertilizer, um, everything is used. And how, how do you guys get funding for the program? Uh, we're funded by the Bureau of Reclamation, Department of Fish and Game, and uh, Sport Fish Restoration, <laughs> U.S. Fish and Wildlife.
lots of funding. Do you find that the returns are, um, say last year returns, were they lower than before? So um, we don't have information necessarily, but they that will determine the fishing regulations. Um, so break fishing regulations for this year for salmon were closed, so that mm -hmm. usually indicates that they were low numbers. We're up here in the American River. This goes all the way down to the bay. You look up on here. Nothing out here and here. Sacramento. If you come when they're open, they'll give you a cup of fish food. to come here on the fish processing day better come early because the whole parking lot's full fishing it's fine but hooking is the only way we're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.